Okay, I've been using the iPhone 11 Pro, not the Max, the Pro, just the you know, smaller one. I've been using that since the new iPhone 11s came out back whenever they came out. So several months, uh, close to six months at this point, uh, five months. Anyway, I really like the iPhone 11 Pro. There were some things that I didn't like about it all that much, and there were some things that I, that, uh, you know. Anyway, last week... I decided to um, get rid of my iPhone 11 Pro and go with something entirely different. Now, what are some of the reasons why I might have gotten rid of the iPhone 11 Pro? Well, f first, money. Money is a big thing, and and honestly, paying a thousand. It was only a 64 gigabyte model, so it was a thousand dollars. But but still, like a thousand dollars is still a lot of money. And the value that I'm getting from that phone for the money that I'm paying is not all, yeah, it's, it, it's questionable. So I decided to sell it. I sold it on Swappa. It just got delivered to the person who bought it. I decided to sell it. It was in perfect condition, beautiful phone. And uh, I sold it, $850. And I turned around and bought something new, something, well, that looks like this. <laughs> yes, I bought an iPhone 11 in white. Now, some of you might be saying, that's, in that's insane. Why would you do such a thing? I can't believe that you did that. Some of you might not be saying that, but it seems like a step backwards. I understand, but there are some reasons why I think the iPhone 11 is a, a better value and B, um, a better choice all around for me and maybe a lot of other people. So hear me out. First off, let's start with the size compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. This is a 5.8 inch screen and I believe the iPhone, I don't remember the iPhone 11 Pro size, but it's smaller than this. <laughs> it's smaller than this and I like a slightly bigger phone. I don't really like the feel of the, the Max phones in my hand. They're just a little too big. So this is kind of the perfect size. So the size is a big deal, and size is something that I wanted to get. Now, some of you may be saying, well, there's a screen, but we'll get to the screen later, okay? The other factor that I factored in, I had a 64-gigabyte iPhone 11 Pro. To get, a, to get anything higher, I'd have to really go up in price, and I don't want to go up in price. 2020 is the year of the the mid-range, the cheaper smartphone. I, I, when you look at what Samsung is doing with their prices on the S20 line, when you look at everything is just like it's crazy town. It's crazy town and it just has to stop. And for me, this is basically my, this is my like everyday phone, right? So I didn't want to have a bunch of money sunk into my everyday phone if I didn't have to. Getting the iPhone 11 uh, gave me the opportunity to get 256 gigabytes of storage, 256 gigabytes of storage for $850, which is exactly what I paid for the, uh, I got I got out of the iPhone 11 Pro. So I went from 64 to 256, which I think is 64 times three. I don't know, I'm terrible. Yeah, yeah six, 64 times three, I think. Anyway. <laughs> Don't don't hate me because I can't do math. I got 256 gigabytes of storage in here, and that is a good thing. I've always used 64 gigabyte models uh, since they've been like the baseline model. I've always used the baseline model for an iPhone regardless, but I've used the 64 gigabyte version since they've been the standard. They I, I haven't had a big problem with running out of space or anything like that. I have a new video coming up probably early next week about how to declutter your iPhone, how to minimize your what, what you've got on there and how to get it all set up so that you don't have to worry about that if you use the lower end storage models. I've never had a problem with the 64 ne necessarily running out on me, however, why run the risk? I I went on, I do a lot of filming, okay? And I use the iPhone for a lot of that, so it seemed like it made more sense to have 256 gigabytes than not to have 256 gigabytes. And since I'm traveling more, although I hate to travel, I can put all kinds of like, you know, movies and stuff like that on here. So 
that is all good. That is a, is a giant bonus. Some of you might be saying, well, Jason, but you've only got two camera lenses now. You've only got two camera lenses, whereas the Pro had three. And well, you wouldn't be wrong. That's correct. I have two camera lenses. However, I, it, it, this has the two camera lenses that I want. It has the wide angle. It has the ultra wide angle. I never used the telephoto. I, when I did, I wasn't really satisfied with how it looked or what I got from it. The wide angle is good for just everyday stuff. The ultra wide angle is good for when I was at CES with the 11 Pro Max or the 11 Pro. I shot everything on the ultra wide angle and it made a huge difference. It was I got so much more into the shot and it was so much more of a, a an appropriate focal length for for what I was doing. If you're somebody who likes to do vlogs or capture just, uh, you know, behind the scenes stuff for your YouTube channel or, you know, any, any number of things like that, then the ultra wide and the wide angle are really all you need. Uh, so I'm not, I don't really feel like I'm losing anything in terms of the camera at all. And the final reason that I decided to go with the iPhone 11 instead of keeping the iPhone 11 Pro is that the internals on this phone are exactly the same as the internals on the iPhone 11 Pro. Uh, you're not losing anything. So that to me makes it a no brainer. Now, some of the, I am losing some things. Some things are downsides and I am going to admit that freely right now Yes, it's got an aluminum like casing to it. Yes, the glass on the back is not that super sexy frosted uh, matte glass, but it's shiny, which I don't care for too much. Uh, the matte was great with not leaving fingerprints on the phone, so I really like that. And you do have some matte here on the on the camera <laughs> thingy. <laughs> the camera hump. Uh, and I guess also a plus is that this camera array doesn't look nearly as bad as the camera array on the iPhone 11 Pro. I, I mean, of course, yes, everybody's gotten used to it. Now every phone manufacturer is using the, is some kind of square for their camera arrays. So there's no big deal. We're all used to it. We complained and then it came out and we're like, hey, okay. Um, there, is, there is that downside though that the build is not quite the same. Although it's one thing that Apple does incredibly well is it help somehow they make their phones feel so hefty and so solid that even this, the more quote unquote budget model feels super solid and super, super hefty. It feels like it, it feels like it weighs more than my LG V50, which is a thousand dollar phone, which, you know, I, so I've been really happy with this. And the battery life, while the battery life on the 11 Pro was amazing, it was a smaller battery. The battery in here, the battery in here is, uh, I haven't taken it down below 50% since I got it. That's crazy talk. You, I'll never have to experience battery anxiety again. Now, of course, I yes, I, I'm going to switch phones several times this year. I switch phones several times every year. So why go get this one? I need to have a phone that is like my home phone, my, my phone home, <laughs> phone home, eight day phone home. <laughs> I need to, I need to have a, like a home phone and that I, that I use on a regular basis and I always go back to. And so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to have something like that. Yes, some of you are saying, oh, but the, the screen, it's not as good as the other ones. And yeah, I guess it's it's an LCD screen instead of an OLED screen. And you, side by side, you can see the differences. Are they world changing? Not really. But if you're just using this phone and you look at the screen, it looks good. It's a very good looking screen. I mean, I, I don't know how well it comes through on the on the on the camera, but I mean, it's super vibrant, like look at the super vibrant colors. I, I just think it looks fantastic. Uh, Apple does so many good things with their screens. Yes, I ditched my iPhone 11 Pro, but I didn't ditch it for anything other than an iPhone. I, I, <laughs> I didn't ditch it for anything other than an iPhone 
11. I get more for my money and the trade-offs that I get are not nearly as as significant as they could be. So I'm happy with this purchase. I'm happy that I got this phone. I'm happy that I'll be able to live with it for a while and I'll be able to count on it as, as like a secondary camera and a primary camera when I go out traveling places. I'm happy with this phone. And I also wanted to finally do this as a way to sort of encourage myself, but also encourage other people to stay away from the thousand dollar phones. If you can get a, a really good phone, it's a good size, great battery life, good looking screen. If you can get all that on a phone that costs $850 for 256 gigs of storage, then why pay $1449 for the 512 version of the iPhone 11 Pro Max? There's, that's stupid. Stupid crazy talk. Unless you're going to keep your phone for five years, which is about the life cycle of how long Apple will support phones with new software, unless you're going to keep your phone for five years, then there's no reason at all for you to spend that kind of money. I, I implore you, think about the, the cheaper phones. The iPhone 11, the iPhone 10R, and if in March things happen as we think they are, there'll be some kind of iPhone 11 SE2 or, or 9. I don't know why they go back to 9, but I'll call it the iPhone 11 SE2, which will have an iPhone 8-style body from everything we hear and will come in at $400 to start. $400 to start. So... You add storage to that and you're barely over $500. The days of the $1,000 phone are numbered. Yes, people are going to release them. Yes, people are going to buy them. Yes, it's going to be a flex. But I don't feel like I have to flex. I want to get more out of my phone for less. And maybe you do too. Let me know down in the comments below. We'll have a boisterous discussion. I really appreciate you being here. I'm sure I triggered some of you, and uh, that's kind of part of what I was going for anyway, because it's just fun. You know, people get so triggered and they leave crazy comments. And why not encourage that behavior just for fun? Right? Right. Anyway. I'm laughing a lot because all of this is funny to me, not because I'm having inappropriate emotional responses to things. I, somebody left that in a comment for me that I had some sort of mental disorder. It's absolutely crazy. I laugh at, at the stuff that I say because I'm amusing myself. I am amusing myself. You should try it sometime. Thanks so much for being here. If this is your first time, come back, like, subscribe, bell, notify yourself, and do all those things. If you've been here before, thank you ever so much for coming back again. Uh, if you want to have some Painfully Honest Tech merchandise, we have that down below in the, in the description. And if you want to be a member of the channel, we also have that down there in the description. And that is awesome. A lot of fun, and you know, I'm finally getting around to you know making ha making it happen. <laughs> I'm finally getting around to to getting the perks out as promised. So, if you want to be a part of the channel, get special behind the scenes stuff as well as early access to videos and all that kind of thing, then membership might just be for you. We have membership tiers from two dollars to fifteen dollars. And for those of you who like to watch my live streams, uh, the podcast and my Friday morning streams, uh, I'm going to be doing most of my streaming over on Twitch now. Uh, I'm a, I'm a Twitch affiliate at this point, and I can't Twitch stream and YouTube stream at the same time. So I'm going to take all the live stuff over to Twitch. Twitch is a, is a platform that's intended for live stuff. And so Follow me over there, Painfully Honest Tech, over on Twitch. The channel is twitch.tv forward slash Painfully Honest Tech. Come over, follow me, join me for the live streams. Uh, my name is Jason. Sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts. Ah, until the next time, I'm out.